Why, hello there, my internet friends. My name is John Jagsney, and today I'm going to be lighting a scene in Unreal Engine. This scene was provided by my good friend, Mr. EJ Hassenfratz from iDesign and School of Motion, and he challenged me to recreate the scene in Unreal Engine 5. So let's go and light some fun stuff in Unreal Engine 5. Alright, so I'm starting with a scene in Unreal Engine 5. I have a point light and a rectangular light on my object just to make sure that uh, we can see kind of what's happening on the main hero. And I really want to show you the environment lighting so you can get the atmosphere and the scene and the storytelling. So what we're going to do is first add a BP sky sphere. Generally, I like to start adding light to my scene by starting with the sky, sort of just go from there so I'll add the BP sky sphere and it's kind of hard to see what's happening so I'm just gonna leave my camera here and we can see if we move up in the scene we have a sky and what's really cool about the BP sky sphere is that we can change the Sun height and it's gonna change the look if it's higher in the sky it's more like a midday scene if it's lower then it's definitely nighttime so super fun way to very easily add a sky to our scene so i'm going to set this to zero just to start so it feels like sunrise or sunset maybe i'll crank this down just a little bit so it's like just before that point and i'm just looking at this light over in the background of the trees now obviously it's kind of hard everything is black right now because there's not a lot of lights so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add a directional light so i'm gonna look up directional light i'm just gonna drag my directional light into the scene and we can see we're obviously getting some light in the scene right here and if i move this around there's some interesting shadow things happening and we'll get to that in just a moment but right here what i want to do is i want to go in and change a couple settings on my directional light first off i'll set the intensity to 3.14 that's just going to bring down the intensity by quite a lot i'm going to bring up the indirect lighting intensity and i'm going to bring up the volumetric scattering intensity to their max values on these sliders we're not going to worry about everything else just yet but what i am going to do is i'm going to scroll down into my directional light settings and turn off ray trace shadows and you'll see why in just a little bit. But right now we're getting this look. And the reason why I'm doing this is I wanna add an exponential height fog. And when we add this, nothing really happens. But if we go to our exponential height fog and then we go to our volumetric fog setting and we just enable that right there, we can see there's something interesting happening with the light there's like a little bit of a a volume a light shaft so to speak and if i crank up my density just a little bit more we're gonna get an interesting look here and if i scrub through we're getting that volumetric look now what's happening is if you check out william foucher's youtube video on how to do volumetric lighting he says he built out a scene to perfectly have these shafts of light so what i did is I took a texture, it's called a gobo. So if I go into my folder for gobos, come on, come on to the other side from my other monitor, I can see here I have these very interesting black and white looking textures and I got these from Grayscale Gorilla. What I'm doing is I'm taking these textures and bringing them into Unreal Engine and then i'm putting them on a material and creating a material and you have this node here called a panner and what the panner does is it basically scrolls the image from left to right or right to left so i so if i set this to zero it's not going to move at all i'm just going to undo that and i'm going to keep that exactly as is because that is what's driving the volumetric shadows in my scene so if i move over and i definitely have a lot of stuff happening because of these shadows it's definitely not in real time at the moment plus all the objects in my scene so if you're trying to build a video game i do not recommend building things this way but you get this really cool interesting shadow look in your scene so my goal here 
is to really showcase how you can get some really interesting lighting effects if you're a little creative. Now, these are just the one and two actors, the uh, or three actors rather, the BP Sky Sphere, the Directional Light, and the Exponential Height Fog, but I still think it's very dark. So I'm gonna add a couple other things. First off, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go into my Place Actors panel and search a skylight. And the reason why I wanna add a skylight is that it's gonna help fill in a lot of those shadows in the scene. We're not gonna get a lot of that global illumination effect from the directional light and we're losing a lot of detail. So the skylight is allowing us to fill in all the extra gaps that the directional light is not able to fill. So now what I wanna do with my skylight is change the sky distance threshold to one. I wanna go down to my lower hemisphere solid color and turn that off and then i want to make this movable and now that's going to really fill in a lot of that extra detail and that's going to really help light this scene now the look i'm going for is something darker and moody and fun but i want to bring a little bit of color into this now so the best way to do that for this scene would be to go to my directional light and go to my light color here, and then just add a touch, a touch of orange, just the smallest amount. If we take it too far, it definitely looks weird and gross, but something incredibly subtle so that we can get just a touch of color for the color grade and make that feel a little bit more colorful. Now what I'm gonna do is go into my skylight and set the intensity to maybe 1.5, maybe two, and just fill in some of those extra details. And this is a good starting point for my scene. Now one thing I should mention is that there's a thousand ways to skin a cat. Your scene might be different, your demands might be different, so you might need to do your Unreal render as a real-time system. I have so much trees and stuff in my scene, so much fog. If you look at my stat FPS, my FPS counter up here, it is definitely much slower than is playable for a video game. But what I'm going for here is to get a really cool looking shot. And if I go to my sequencer and I play this back, I think I'm achieving what I want to. And again, like I said, lighting is one of those things where to an extent, it can be subjective. Don't overexpose or underexpose your shot, but Sometimes the look you're going for will convey a different story. Obviously, we can make this much brighter and colorful by maybe changing the light direction, maybe going to the BP sky sphere and bringing up the sun height and bringing down the density of the fog and make it feel a little bit more midday and maybe go into the skylight and crank this value up. And we can get Crank it up. And we can get a very different look by just changing some settings in our four main actors. I have the BP Sky Sphere, which is creating that sky background. I have my directional light, which is gonna be my sun in the scene. I have my exponential height fog, which is creating those volumetrics. I have my skylight that's helping fill in the extra detail. Thank you so much, EJ, for helping me by providing this scene and inspiring me and challenging me to create this. I hope you as the viewer learned something. And if you did, let me know in the comment section down below or if, or if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. Hit me up on Instagram at John Jagsney. And I will leave you with one final tip and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you make some gains. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.